super stable AI video with DV pose input. Hello, my friends. How are you doing today? I want to show you something that is magic because AI video with stable diffusion is becoming crazy good. This is another cooperation with Matteo. He's a master of AI video rendering. Check out his channel. There is tons to learn on there. Let's get started. So this is what we are going for today. Look at that beautiful animation, how much stability is in there for the clothing, for the smooth movement, for the hair and the face, even the background details, lots less flickering than in the past. Actually, no flickering at all. Now, of course, here we have a little bit of change of the design of the clothing. Yes, the hands are also melting a little bit into the body. I have to say I rushed this a little bit so I can get the video out to you. So with some more testing around with the settings and the prompt, you can highly improve this because here I have a second example. This is created by Matteo and you can see how consistent everything here is from the clothing, the hair, the background, everything, the amazing morphing of the face because this is a multi prompt video absolutely stunning and we're going to look at both of these processes today. Of course, what we need here is a video input. So I'm using a dance video from Sweetie High. She has over a million followers. Check her out if you want to. Gonna link her below the video. And here just to show you how that works, we have here on the left side our video input where she's doing the dance. And as you can see here in the note, we can do some stuff. Now the note we're actually using in the workflow is looking a little bit different, doesn't have this kind of video pre Review, but the settings are the same. So here, for example, you can force the size. For example, say you want to have a width of 512 or a height of 512. So the video is not going to be too big and you don't have to edit it before, but you can just do it in here. Also set custom height, custom width and so on. Another thing you can do here is the frame load cap. That means it only will take in this case 32 images the skip first frames. You can set this up here. For example, if you say I want to start with the frame 100, you can put the number in here and then it's going to start after that number and the select every nth frame. That means, for example, if you put a two in here, it would take only every second frame. In this case, we're going to take every frame. And then here we have our DV pose estimator. Everything here is set up and this is also should download for you correctly these models automatically. And then just to show you how that looks, I have here a video combine where we have here our DV pose animation. Now you can see that this is actually moving slower than the video on the left side. The reason for that is simply that here in the video combined have set a frame rate of eight. You can change it to anything you want. But now let's have a look at the actual workflow that has been built by Matteo because he's really good at that stuff. So let's check this out. You can see it's not too complex, not too much stuff going on, but it's really hard to figure it out anyways. So it's really good that Matteo's did that hard work for us. Now here on the left side, we are loading our model. Dream Shaper 8 is a very capable model. It's a 1.5 model, which is good because video rendering takes quite a while because of all the frames, but also because you have to render them two times to get higher quality. So 1.5 model is a good idea. Below that, we have something that's a little bit extra. We have here a number of frames. So this is an integer node basically and here we can set a value that is then going out to different nodes to set how many frames are we going to use in this case we're going to use 32 frames to have the dancing animation a little bit longer now up here we have our batch prompt schedule in this case actually for that video i'm not using a batch prompt i'm using a batch prompt in the second example but still it is good to have a look at that so when you scroll in here you can see that we have a zero at the beginning and then we have here our prompt followed by a comma. So that means you can have more lines like that all separated with a comma afterwards. And the number here is the frame number where that prompt is starting. And then below that, you can have some additional information for the prompt if you want to. And you can see in this case, the output is only 
a positive prompt. Here comes something that is extremely important. When we go down here, you see we have here some additional notes. Now here we have a LoRa. The LoRa is very important for the animation. I'm going to link the file below the video. You can see here this is called V3 SD 1.5 adapter checkpoint. In this case we are using a strength of 0 0.5 this is very important for the animation to work. Now, when we go over here, you can see we have some other notes here. One is called uniform context options here. Now, what this does is when you have more than 16 frames, which is the maximum which can be rendered by animate diff. So if, for example, in this case, we have 32 frames, this is setting it up as 16 frames going to be rendered per batch. And then we have an overlap of two frames so that actually the style is consistent. So it's rendering two times 16 frames and then combining these two to one video with 32 frames. This is why we need this context option here. And then here we have our animated diff loader. Now again, we have here a model inside. Again, it's very important to use that model V3SD15MM checkpoint. It's a checkpoint model. The first one was a LoRa model. This is a checkpoint model. Very important. Next over here, we have a note for free U version 2. You can use that or not. Experiment with that. It's part of the workflow. We have here the batch size for the image. In this case, I did not rescale or reset the size of the image here. I kept it at 512 by 512 just so the rendering is going a little bit faster. But you can set this to the ratio of the video if you want to so you get actually the full video and not just a crop from the middle. And here we have our K sampler. Now a good advice here is to go for example with a fixed number as soon as you find something that looks kind of good and then play around with the other settings because still even though this is a very good workflow getting a consistent and very good result is not easy you have to do some experimentation not gonna lie about that and then you have here of course your step count your CFG scale the sampler DVPM seems to work very well with these animate diff animations schedule or normal denoise one in that case we're not using our video input only the DV pose input and the very very important part after that is that you are going to send this into a second K sampler and on top of that we have here our VAE decode. This is going here into a control net. Again this has a very special model. It's the Anidiff control net checkpoint. Again I'm going to link that below the video. This, I believe, is downloading as just a control net checkpoint. I wrote the any diff at the start, so I know this is for our animations because sometimes the model creators just don't give it specific names, but you can rename that, no problem, as long as you remember what it is. We are using this control net to keep the consistency of our first rendered video in the second rendered video, but the second rendering is improving the quality. So when you look here at the first video, which already looks pretty good, you can stop at that point if you want. There is no necessity to render both parts, but you can see here there is more errors in this version. For example, the hand is moving completely through the body. These kind of things can actually be fixed by rendering it a second time. So when you look closely, at this result here, which already, like I said, is really good. You can keep it if you want to. And then we go to the second result. You will see there is certain improvements here. We have finer details in here. The hand is staying in the front, even though the fingers don't work in this case, but still the quality overall is better. But keep in mind that this takes double the time because you have to render it twice. And of course, like I said, up here we have our second case sampler that is doing the second rendering. And then in both cases, you can see here we have a video combiner and Matteo does here also some extra steps, for example, a little bit of sharpening. And then also what he does here is some interpolation to add some additional frames to make the animation flow smoother. Here you can see this is recommending the model Rife. 47 or RIVE 49. These models 
are automatically downloaded with the node. Now that we have clarified almost everything in here, let's look at where the DV pose is actually applied. For that, we have the area down here. Now in the upload from Mateo onto OpenArt, this is not in a group here, it's not in a box as what I did here to make it a little bit easier for you to see. So again, here we have our load video. In this case, we are loading it from a path. So what you want to do here is to right click on your computer on the path and then simply copy paste it in here. Now keep in mind when you copy the path over with Windows right click copy path, there might be quotation marks at the end and the beginning of the address. You have to delete them because otherwise you're getting an error message. Click on OK here. So you have the path in here. Again, you can set this up here for the size for the starting frames and so on. In this case, you don't see the starting frames because we have the frame load cap connected to the node that I showed you in the beginning. Then we're using here our DV pose estimator. It's running through and then instead of creating a preview video, it's going directly here into the apply control net. Now again, something that is really, really important here is that you use the correct model. So in this case, and again, I'm linking this below the video, it is the control V11P SD15 open pose FP16 save tensor file. Really important. This goes into your models folder into the control net folder so that you can pick it from here. And of course, another thing that's important here is that you play around with the values of the strength and also the start percentage and percentage to see what kind of result you get to get the best video. So you still there's some experimentation involved here. Now, when you're loading this workflow, a lot of these boxes might be read for you. So what you need to do here is you need to have the manager for ConfUI installed, of course. You click on that and then you click here on install missing custom nodes. This will then show you a list. In my case, there is no list. So let's go here to the installed custom nodes. You have a list like this and then on the right side is going, for example, to ask you to install. You click on that. You wait for it to finish. It's going to tell you down here if it has finished and then you can install the next one, the next one, the next one. And when you're done with everything you have to install, you click on restart and this will restart ConfUI for you. So now let's look here at the second version. To save some time, I have not rendered the better version of the video because I feel like this version already looks super good. As you can see, we have here the exact same workflow, but I did some changes that are necessary to get this kind of result here. So what you want to do, first of all, instead of using the LoRa model only loader, that is only loading it into the model, we are going to use load LoRa, which is loading it into the model, but then also into the clip. So you have to connect the clip to our prompt scheduler up here, but of course also to our negative prompt, very important. Then up here, you can see in this case, we have here our scheduled prompt. So we have here zero and then we have the prompt Close up, beautiful sorceress face, magical, colorful fantasy elf magic flame in an enchanted forest in spring. One thing I want to point out here for this, but also for the video workflow is keep it short, keep it clear, maybe play around with words where you don't have to go too long to explain something. The shorter the prompt, the more precise the prompt, the better it is for you. Now here you can see we start with frame zero, then we go to frame 10. And this is actually again, the exact same prompt as the first prompt. The reason for that is because if we would set it to zero and then 20 here, the progression between these two prompts would start from zero up to 20. But this is not what we want here. So we want to keep the prompt until the 10th frame and then we want to morph it over to the next prompt here, which is different. You can see here evil grin. This is then in the 20th frame that this is fully adapted as a prompt. So play around with that. See what you get from that. And like I said, keep the prompts simple and clear. Another thing that I'm doing here is down here in that area, I'm bypassing 
all of these notes for the DV post for the video and so on. But then also, and this I found pretty interesting, but also important, I disconnect my apply control net, even though it's bypassed, it still seemed to have some impact. So I disconnect that here and then I connect these directly. You can see to my negative prompt over here and then also connect them up here to my positive prompt directly so that there is no impact whatsoever of our control net. For the rest of the settings, you might want to play around a little bit again. So for example, you can see here for the LoRa, I'm using a strength for the model and the clip of one, while before for our animation, we only used a strength of 0 0.5. Another difference is when we look here at the K sampler, you can see I'm using 20 steps with a CFG scale of eight. And when we compare this to our rendering of the video of the dancing woman, you can see here in that case, I'm using 15 steps with a CFG scale of 7.5. So there are some differences in the setup and in the setting. You have to experiment around until you get the best result. For the video template that you can download here from OpenArt, you can see down here we have the workflow, you can preview it here. And then up here we have our download button. As you can see, you can also launch it in the cloud to render it online if you have an account with open art. And here I would suggest to you to find a video that you like, maybe with not too much motion at the beginning, and then download that experiment with the prompt, with the settings. Of course, keep in mind that you have to change the prompt adapted to what you have in the video. So you can have a ton of fun with this workflow. My mind is blown with the quality and how stable the video is. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.